Hello, today we're going to talk about fields. Before we start, we're going to look at this private identifier here. What this does is this makes it so these two fields can't be accessed directly from another class. So this does two things for us. First, it makes it easier to prevent bugs. Second, it keeps the AP people happy when we're writing a free response answer. Okay, let's look at the two different fields we have. We have our first field, which is a static field. Static fields are better known as class variables. And we also have a non-static field, which are better known as instance variables. So to make it static, we say static. To make it non-static, we don't say anything. Okay, so let's talk about the difference. The static fields, or the class variables, belong to the class. That means while we can change them, if we change them in one instance, it changes in all instances. So different instances can't have different values for a static field. On the other hand, an instance variable belongs to the instance. So each instance can have a different value for a non-static field. Now, depending on what you're doing with it, it may make sense to have a static or non-static field. In this case, all our monsters are going to be at the same location. So it's fine to make it static, because if we change it, we want to change it for all monsters at once. On the other hand, not all monsters are going to have the same species in this program. So we made this field non-static, so we can have each monster be part of a different species. Now, as a reminder, static fields can be accessed by static methods or non-static methods, whereas non-static fields can also only be accessed by non-static methods. So we've got our getter method for location, our setter method for location, our getter method for species, and our setter method for species. Our getter and setter method for species had to be non-static since species is non-static. Our getter and setter method for location could have been non-static, but we decided to make it static to give us a little more flexibility. Now let's go down and look here, and we're going to learn another fact about uh, fields. Now one interesting thing about fields is we can have a parameter with the same name as the field within the same scope. We can also have a local variable with the same name within the same scope as a field. And we'll talk about this a little more in the next lesson. Now let's go over to our haunted house class. So haunted house, let's look at a couple lines of code. We start by declaring a variable of type monster and named it Dracula. Then we created a new instance of the monster class and put the pointer inside the Dracula variable. So now Dracula is pointing to an object of monster type. Now I'm going to show you a little trick I like to use to trace this out. It's not completely accurate as far as what's going on in the background. However, it's very useful for tracing. Okay, so first we know our monsters have a class variable which belongs to the class and a instance variable which belongs to the instance. So what I like to do is I like to draw out a box that represents the class part. And this is going to be, we'll call this monster, because that's the name of the class. And our class variable location. And we will set this equal to null. Because that is what it is going to default since we did not initialize it there. Okay. Now... Let's go back to Haunted House. We created the variable Dracula, which did that. Then we made an instance a monster. So we're going to draw an arrow to a memory location. And here we are going to put the instance. So this is going to be an instance of the monster class. And here we're going to put our instance variable. So this is going to be species. And our species is also going to be null because we did not initialize it to anything. So we know objects always default to null if there are fields. 
Okay, so let's go back to Haunted House. So next we create another monster, and uh, we are putting it in a variable called Wolfman. So let's go down here, Wolfman equals, make a pointer to another memory location. And for the purpose of this, we're just going to make a copy of this because it is also a new object and species will also default to null. Okay, and then we're going to make a third one. We're going to call it Elmo. So in our stack here, we have the variable and the data in the stack is a pointer. So it is pointing to another memory location because we are creating a third new object. And there we go. Okay, let's see what happens next. Okay, here what we're doing is we're saying monster, and we're calling set location. Now, we're calling it directly from the class instead of an instance. This is legal because set location is a static method. So we are setting the value to scary house. So we're going to go to the class area of it, and we're going to change this value to scary house. Okay, our next command, we're looking at the instance wolfman, but we're calling the set location method. Now, our set location method changes our static field location. So again, it's going to change it up in the class part of the variable. So, we are changing this to house of fear. Okay, now we're going to system out print line. We're going to access the Elmo instance, but we're going to call get location. Now, get location is going to pull the value of the location field and return it and then print it out. So, the value of the location field is house of fear. So, this command here is going to print out house of fear. And we see that happened here. Okay, let's look at our next set of commands. Okay, we're calling the, we're looking at the Dracula instance. We're calling set species. So let's look at our set species method. Set species is accessing our species field. Now, this is a non static method. So we had to call our non static method from an instance, and Dracula is an instance and we change the species field in Dracula only. So where's Dracula pointing? Okay, Dracula's pointing right there. We are changing that to vampire. Okay, let's look at our next one. Elmo, we're calling our Elmo instance, we're calling the set species method, and we are passing it the string Muppet, so it's gonna set the species, uh, the species field in the one Elmo is pointing at to Muppet. So let's do that. Okay, and we can see the Wolfman is still pointing at an object, and the object that the Wolfman variable is pointing at still has a null value for species. Okay, so we're going to say system out print line. We're going to say Dracula. The Dracula object gets species. So the species value for Dracula is vampire. So the first thing that's going to print out after the Elmo thing is vampire. Then we're going to call Elmo.getSpecies. And Elmo's species value is Muppet. And then we're going to call Wolfman. The object that Wolfman is pointing to. And we're going to get the species value, and that is null. So the last three lines are going to be Vampire, Muppet, Null. Let's run that and see that happen. Okay, there we go. Vampire, Muppet, Null. So we covered the two different types of fields we want to concern ourselves with, the static and the non-static. Static are better known as class variables. Non-static are better known as instance variables. Remember, an instance variable belongs to an instance. It can have a different value in each instance. 
the class variable belongs to the class. It has to have the same value across all instances of the class. And if we change it one place, we change it everywhere. We also learned that you can have a, um, a parameter or a local variable with the same name as a field. Now, you may not have a parameter and a local variable with the same name, but you can have one or the other. And we'll talk about how that works in our next video.